So here is Perina to punt it away with Dante, or rather Nadir Mlendi, back to receive uh, for Navy. A 23 yard punt, and that one has been blocked. Navy blocks the punt, picked up along the far side, and they'll get into the end zone for a touchdown. Tyler Cox picked up the blocked punt and brings it into the end zone for six. And Navy answers up magically, and it's a 7 6 game with 5.48 to go in the first quarter. You know, these. Army Navy game so situational. You never know what can happen. You know, great play by that Navy defender right there. It's hard to tell who blocked it. Might have been number 94, Ulrich Williams. Either that or number 24, David Niski. Deloitte back at the Army 10 to receive. Moran trying to pin him deep. Deloitte will catch it at about the 10 and is immediately walloped. Oh my goodness, a powerful hit by a guy who normally plays offensive line. That is Liam Brown, an all-league first-team offensive lineman from a year ago. And Brown proving, hey, if you need me on the defensive line, I'm available as well. And a buzz in the crowd after that wallop. And Deloitte made the catch and before he could make a plant to try and get the man to miss. He was pile driven into the canvas. So what a massive turn of events as instead of a go ahead touchdown for Atwood, a holding call has the play brought back fake handoff and instead they throw for it. A fake handoff and open in the end zone for six is Hunter Genix. The first receiving touchdown of his collegiate career and Navy. If at first you fail, try and try again have taken a 13 10 lead with 413 to go in the first half. And yeah, that's been the difference right now. Navy's been able to make that first man miss. Army has not had that same sort of success since that opening drive. Atwood on third down under pressure, throws over the middle. Wide open, Kai Sasaki tries to get past one defender and does and is in for a touchdown. Kai Sasaki just would not go down. J.D. Sparks tried grabbing him from behind, but Sasaki is into the end zone for six, and Navy has a two-possession lead. You know, that play's so similar to the same play they scored that 18-yard uh, touchdown on the last time, you know, uh, fake the pass, you know, get two, uh, two defenders to get, get in on uh, Atwood and then just wide open on the back end. So Saki with his sixth touchdown catch of the season, the 5-5 senior from Hunt Valley, Maryland, who spent the first three years of his college career on defense on the lacrosse team. Tight formation for Navy. They fake the pitch to Messina. Atwood keeps up the middle. He's got some space before he is jackknifed by Brahim Swanson, slicing from the near side. But Atwood a big chunk, and will pick up a first down for the midshipman on the scramble. He first has been so good more. on that scramble so far today. That's really also been a difference in this game. It feels like there have been a few times on offense Atwood has really just turned something out of nothing. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's better than seven points, but still, you know, allowing Navy to get some points on the board is really not something that the... It's a fake. Long's running far sideline. He's got the first down, and he's near the goal line. A late flag has been thrown along the far side as well, but a fake field goal from Navy is enough for a first down. The wide receiver, Joe Long, the holder, spun out to the far sideline and had enough for the sticks. But it will still be first down and goal for Navy. An outstanding fake drawn up by Alfonso Matus and the midshipman. Long faked the pass and was able to scamper his way forward for a first down. Waltz, the deep back, three-man backfield. They hand it off to the fullback, Devin Martin, and the linebacker serving as fullback is in for a Navy touchdown. And three seconds into the fourth quarter, the midshipmen have taken a 27-10 lead. Devin Martin, who has had himself a career game on defense tonight, has also come in as a blocker a few times on offense. And he is rewarded for his efforts as he punches it in on second and goal. Can never have too many weapons, and Scott Belleville's done a beautiful job filling in so far today. Willicky under pressure, and the pocket collapses. Angelo Lube with the sack for Navy, and that'll push Army back near the 35-yard line. 
You know, Lube's been all over everywhere this uh this this uh, this game, you know. It might not come out in touchdowns, but you know, I'm so curious to see a stat line by the end of this game how many uh how many uh you know, how, how much he's given the offense of uh, uh, Army trouble this entire game. What the officials would say along the near side. Third and ten for Army. Under pressure, Willicky is going to go down. A pair of defenders, Jake Walensky and Devin Martin again, able to cause the pocket to collapse. And yeah. it's fourth down. Willicky talking to the official. I think he wanted a face mask call as he readjusts his helmet. You had to see that blitz coming, you know, both, you know, you see both the uh, linebacker and uh, tackle coming at Willicky, you know, had to see that that was coming, you know, have him throwing deep balls three plays in a row. So now after the timeout, Willicky is on the field and Army will go for two to try and make this a three-point game. Back to the left of Willicky. A fake the handoff to Beck, throw left side, incomplete. Try to get it to Balan, but it was Mlemdi who dove in front to knock it away. The Cincinnati native. And it's 28-23 Navy. Atwood on second and seven. Fakes the handoff. Spins away from Rass. Now he's going to scramble. And able to get past a couple of more tacklers before Weber Carse is able to get there. And that will be enough for a Navy first down. Great scramble again from Atwood to move the chains. Once again, you know, making that first man miss has been the story of Navy. You know, making that first tackler miss, especially Atwood, able to continuously make something out of nothing. You know? That has been the story today. A beautiful spin move by Atwood. Yep, they have flipped field position back in their favor. Army brings the pressure. They run out far side. Able to break a couple of tackles as Atwood and somehow able to scamper his way forward near the Army 31-yard line. Navy 28, Army 23, third and two. And the Army 23, 121 to go. Sasaki in motion across the formation. Atwood fakes the pitch, keeps it himself, diving forward. And he's got the first down, and that's going to do it. Brandon Atwood. The all-league first-team quarterback from a season ago with a game for the ages this afternoon at West Point. And the senior from Gentry, Arkansas, has all but secured Navy's third straight sprint football championship. It was the fake pitch to Hunter Genix and then just leaping over Ryan Rast to get it up for the first down in what has been an incredibly exciting championship game this Sunday. But it'll be Brandon Atwood and the U.S. Naval Academy midshipmen that come away victorious. Navy doesn't need to run another play. The play clock is still stationary at 40. 15 seconds remain on the game clock. And the party here at Shea Stadium for the midshipmen can begin in earnest for the third consecutive year. Major Alfonso Matus has led the U.S. Naval Academy midshipmen to a collegiate sprint football championship. Your final score this afternoon at Shea Stadium. The U.S. Naval Academy midshipmen 28 and the Army West Point Black Knights 23.